Okay, so what we're going to model now is uh, a arched doorway. So before we begin, if you make sure make sure you're working in polygons mode. If you're not, just click on this list and choose polygons. Or this, um, we're going to be doing a lot of the stuff that in this tutorial in perspective view. So mostly we're working in 3D. Uh, so if we go create polygon primitives, uh, we're going to make a cube and just click and drag it. Uh, we're going to mess around with these settings later on. Right? Okay. So if you turn on your attributes out of there, I'm going to go, go into polycube one and we're going to give it a width of four, a height of six, and then a depth of four. Okay, so we can get rid of that now. Right. Um, so push five in your keyboard, make sure you're in shaded view. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to model a bit of detail into this um, archway and then we're going to duplicate it to make the other side. Okay, so if we go into face mode, I'm going to grab this top face, push F to zoom in there. Uh, we're going to go edit mesh, extrude. Straight away, I want you to switch to your scale tool, which is R on your keyboard. And I'm going to scale that out a tiny bit. Um, add a mesh, extrude again. This time I'm going to pull it up. Add a mesh, extrude again. And I'm going to scale this one in again. Okay. Add a mesh, extrude. Pull this up. Edit mesh, extrude again, and we're going to scale out just to get a kind of curved bit. So if we scale it and then go straight to your move tool, so we've still got this top face selected, and we're going to move it up a bit, and then we're just going to repeat that again. So do extrude, scale it, and then move it up. Okay. What we're kind of doing here is we're creating the illusion that it, it's a bit cur more curved than it really is. Okay. <clears throat> so this stage, uh, this middle set of edges don't seem to curve in as much as uh, I'd like them to. So if you go to select in your menu, what we're going to use is we're going to use um, a tool called the edge loop tool. Select edge loop tool. Okay, so by double clicking on an edge, you can see now it selects all those edges around. So if you go to your scale tool now um, and use the middle one, we can scale that in a bit. See now it's looking a bit more curved. Okay, right, and now we're just going to extrude it straight up again one more time. It's just giving us a bit more detail on this side. Okay, so that's our uh, that's our pillar kind of ready to go. Uh, next thing we'll do is we're going to get rid of this top face here. We're going to delete this. So select it and hit backspace on your keyboard, and you'll see now it leaves a hole. Going all the way through. <coughs> right. So before we go on, uh, what we need to do is we need to make a, a replica of this. You can put in more details uh, on the pillar if you want. But once you get to this stage that you're kind of happy to go on, uh, go into object mode. So hold down your right click on your pillar, move into object mode. Uh, what we want to do is we want to duplicate this. So there's a couple of ways that you can duplicate. Uh, it's kind of the same as any software, there's always a shortcut for it. Uh, you can go edit and then duplicate or you notice here it's uh, Apple D because I'm on a Mac okay so if we go Apple D straight away um, 
it always duplicates objects sitting right on top of where your last object is. You'll notice if you've got kind of broken lines. Um, so we've actually got two of these pillars. So if we're going to move to now and just use one direction. So I'm going to use a blue arrow. Just going to drag it over to the side. Okay. It's very important that you use one direction. Don't be grabbing it by the middle because you'll you'll end up moving your model in different axes. So we're just going to dra drag in one direction. So try and get in the habit of always using these arrows. Okay. Right, so we got our two pillars. Um, you can space these out whatever way you want. I'm kind of happy enough with that, right? Uh, so what we want to do is we want to combine the two of these to be one object. So if you click on one, hold down shift and click on the next one, so they're both selected. Uh, we're going to go to mesh and then combine. Okay, so now the two of them are one object. So every time you click, uh, it'll select both of them, so the two of them are combined. So that was mesh and then combine. Uh, so what we want to do is next, we're going to use a tool um, called the bridge tool. Well, what bridge does is it fills uh, a gap between uh, faces. Okay, so <clears throat> there's different ways you can use a bridge. Uh, one way is you can do it using faces. So if I select that face on this side and this one, Go edit mesh bridge. Um, always try and use options for bridge. Okay, you can see now we get a, a list of kind of options that we can choose. So we're going to this just example. I'm going to show you what a linear path does. So set it to linear path. I'm going to set it to three divisions, and then I'm just going to hit bridge. Okay. So you can see what it's done now is it it bridges the gap between the two faces you selected. Okay. Number of divisions gives us the number across here, so one, two, three, so you can turn that up or down. Um, same as most things in Maya, it'll go into your history, where you can kind of tweak it. Unfortunately, when you tweak the bridge, a lot of time it uh, has kind of bad effects. Okay, so you can bridge faces, you can bridge uh, edges, and you've always got a list of options, so get in the habit of using your options. So every time you see that little square beside someone in the menu in Maya, there's always a set of options behind it. Okay, so what we're going to do for this one is uh, we're going to go into edge mode. <coughs> and we want to select the edges on top of uh, these two pillars. Okay, so it might be handy if you come out of your front this view and we'll go into the side view. Okay, so remember, spacebar brings you out. Spacebar takes you back in. Uh, and we just want to click and drag a box over them like that. Okay? So it doesn't matter if we get these little side ones. Okay. So as long as you've got that selected, Maya will pick up what you're what you're trying to do. Okay. So if those two selected, if I go edit mesh and I'm gonna choose bridge, remember to hit the options. Now, I don't want it to be a linear path. A linear path will be from one point to another, it'll, it'll go straight across. I want it to choose smooth path and curve. And let's set the divisions up to maybe around six. Okay, you can go higher if you want. Basically, the higher the divisions, the smoother the curve. But remember, if you're modeling for game engines, uh, that'll affect your polygon card. Okay, uh, so as soon as you're happy with that, just hit bridge and you can see what it's done. Okay. So it's actually done a curved arch between the two. Okay, so that's what it would look like if we were up at 12 divisions. Okay. It's done a very blocky shape if we set it down to one, two. So you can get different effects. That's our uh, our train modeled. Uh, you'll notice if you try and go into object mode and move this, then you're going to get some weird stuffs going to happen. Okay. Uh, the reason for that is there's actually a curve. Maya makes a curve inside this archway, 
Um, so it's still trying to relate the object to the curve. So whatever we move, it it's pulling away from the curve, so it's affecting it. Um, you can actually change this curve if um, if you want. Okay, so if we go into wireframe, you can see now there's like a little blue line running through your archway. So remember, four goes in the wireframe. If you hold down, you right click. You can see now you get control vertex. So you're get you're actually getting point controls here. So you can grab these points, and when you click and drag them, it'll affect your. Uh, your bridge, okay, so you can get like weird effects. You could grab maybe one of these points and decide that you want to move it and see what it does to the archway, okay. So, this is still editable, you can still change this as much as you want. Okay, so whenever you're happy with your uh, archway, there's a couple of things we'll do that'll free up. Uh, your model to be moved around the scene or taken in the uh, exported out in the engine. Uh, if we go modify, uh, we're going to hit freeze transformations. Then we're going to go modify, or sorry, edit, delete by type, and then history. Okay. So now when you move it around, you see it moves as normal. Another thing you might want to do is modify and then just center pivot. Okay, so I'll put your pivot point right up in the middle. Okay, so the tools we used, uh, just to go back over it, is we used the mesh combine to take two objects, two separate objects, combine them together. So use that very sparingly. Don't uh, don't try and cut corners by doing that. Always try and make your stuff out of one mesh uh, if you can. So we basically took two small meshes and made a big mesh this time. Uh, we took a quick look at the select select edge loop tool. And then we used edit mesh and bridge. Okay, so when we go on the model different objects, we'll keep using bridge so you get more kind of a custom date.